Hey guys, hey, I'm excited again, um, and we're back here in my office. The UPS man brought me something else. So last time, he brought me uh, a pair of Cena 20Ss, new Bluetooth headsets to use on the motorcycle. And today, he brought me something else from Cena. Today, he brought me the Cena Prism. Now, the Cena Prism is a new action camera from Cena. It's been around for a little while. Um, I've been frustrated with audio problems lately. Um, I can't seem to get it to work right for me. I can't seem to get my audio quality to where I'd like it to be in the helmet. Uh, I can't see. I can't seem to get the audio quality where I'd like it to be here in this office for unboxing videos. Kind of doing the best I can, kind of thing, uh, with the equipment that I've got access to. And I've been frustrated with that for a while. And I've been using this Drift HD camera for a long time, and I plan on continuing to use it in as a second camera. It's been a fantastic, low-cost action camera that mounts in a convenient way on the side of the helmet. But I've, I've been ready for a while for something else. And the Cena Prism came out a short while ago, and I thought, what a brilliant concept. The camera essentially pairs directly to a Bluetooth headset, uh, specifically a Cena headset like my 20S, and can take advantage of Cena's UHD or ultra high def, which is nothing more than marketing, there is no standard for that, ultra high def uh, headset profile, which uh, in theory gives excellent quality audio. Now you're a, bit, you're a bit married to that because it has no audio input jack, it has no other way uh, for you to bring audio into the, into the device, but I thought I'd give it a try. I'm really excited about it. Uh, I hope you're excited about it, and so we're going to move the camera, we're going to rip this thing open, we're going to do an unboxing, and from now on, hopefully, you're going to be seeing vlogs using the Cena Prism. All right, guys, let's check it out. Hey, guys, John here with my dog, Charlie. You can't see him, but he's running around uh, along the floor here. He decided that, that he just had to be in here with me, and he had to be a part of this. So the Cena Prism Bluetooth Action Camera comes in a nice, attractive box, something that we're seeing from Cena. Uh, on the side, about the only important part of the box, really, other than some, some nifty pictures, is... The feature set on the side, Bluetooth 4.0, if you remember from my review on the Cena 20S, Bluetooth 4.0 is a low energy standard. The big key point there is that it uh, uses a lot less battery life for the Bluetooth connection. Uh, Bluetooth camera control, you can use your Bluetooth headset to control it, 1080p, of course, although it is a little disappointing that this doesn't do 60 frames per second, um, and, uh, and we're stuck at 30 frames per second, but that's all I had before, so I don't think I'll miss it, but... You know, you do kind of wonder why a camera released less than a year ago it, uh, can't handle uh, 60 frames per second, but it is what it is. Bluetooth audio recording, UHD voice recording, those are the big features, the things that we're really excited about, uh, you know, excellent audio quality. Uh, and two features that are important to me is that we can use it while we're charging and it's firmware upgradable. Cena does a fantastic job of adding new features and upgrading their firmware. And um, there's Charlie. He's decided he wanted in here, and now he's decided he wants out. That's a dog for you. Come here, buddy. So you can use it while you're charging, which is important for me because I have. Here, Charlie, come, come show yourself to everybody. There's Charlie. So Charlie and I like the fact that you can take uh, this Bluetooth, you know, or, sorry, I'm sorry, not Bluetooth, this USB audio pack, this external battery, and you can plug that into the Cena Prism and use it for extended periods. So one of the reasons that I, li I love that feature is that any action camera isn't going to have more than a couple of hours of battery life. Uh, a battery pack like this will last all day. This comes from Amazon. It's not very expensive. Really, there's tons of external battery packs, usually marketed for smartphones out there, and it'll last all day long with something like this. But that's only important if you can charge while recording, and the Cena Prism does allow for that, which is really, really cool. Uh, it means that I can record all day long. Now, I don't vlog all day long, right? A vlog battery life doesn't really matter because my vlogs aren't more than 10 or 15 minutes, but I always have my camera on. You never know what you're going to catch. So it's nice to know that I have the ability to record all day. So let's stop talking about it. Let's start looking at it. There we have it. The very first thing you see when you open it up is the Prism Flow Chart. Now, the Prism Flow Chart is uh, kind of an easy, quick start guide on how to use it. There are so many functions and features, and like most Cena products, those features and functions come uh, from pushing buttons, uh, the right number, or the right amount of times, and, and it can get kind of complicated. Now, Cena does have a, blue, a Bluetooth uh, functioning app for both Android and iOS that allows you to change settings. That works really well in the 20S. I assume it's going to work well here. This is the camera. It is about the size of a GoPro Hero 4, uh, which is the current model from GoPro at the time of this video. 
So it is about the size of a GoPro. So one advantage is if you're using a GoPro and you're adding the Bluetooth pack from Sina to it, uh, well, this cuts down size. But of course, the big function here is that the lens behind this lens cap is on the side of the camera, uh, or what we might call the side of the camera, instead of on the front like the GoPro. That matters. And the reason that matters is uh, when you're mounting on the side of the helmet, it just works a lot better. Although chin mounts are popular, I prefer a helmet side mount. On the bottom, you have a standard quarter 20 tripod mount, which means this can be mounted to a tripod or a number of universal uh, mounts that are available for all kinds of things. Coming around the back, we have this waterproof uh, back on, and uh, we have micro HDMI, mini USB, micro SD, and of course the battery slot. This does not have an expansion slot like GoPro does. Uh, that's something that GoPro does that is really brilliant, and I wish more manufacturers would jump on that bandwagon. These expansion slots allow all kinds of things to be added to GoPros, including uh, LCD screens, uh, Bluetooth connectors, uh, so on and so forth. So that's something that I wish uh, other manufacturers other than just GoPro would do. Coming around the top, you've got, and I'm already seeing that this back can be a little tricky to get back on. There we go. Coming around the top, you have buttons, just a couple of them, but they're big, they're raised, and they're easy to press in theory. This back one, uh, that might just be a light. Sorry about that. Um, so big, easy to press, but again, with the Bluetooth audio, uh, I'm sorry, with the Bluetooth camera control, you might not even need to press them. But I love that. My, my, my Drift HD, when I'm recording, doing a vlog, I usually write out somewhere, so I already have it on. Then I have to go up here and push it to turn off recording and push it again to turn it on. With gloved hands, that's really hard to do, and I'm really fumbling around trying to feel this little button down here. I think that this is going to be nice because I can feel, feel where it raises and just press down to start and stop recording. And Bluetooth uh, camera control is an excellent and neat feature. However, I want to give you one quick caveat. If you listen to music on your Bluetooth headset, uh, with this connected, even if you're not vlogging, even if you don't want the internal microphone or the microphone from your Bluetooth headset, you cannot listen to music while paired to this unit. Uh, that's something that a lot of people have complained about, and I'm hoping Cena will answer um, in uh, a future firmware update. Another quick uh, negative that I'm going to throw out there is, as you can see, there's no screen on here. I'm fine with that. In fact, I'm happy about that because screens eat up battery even for the small amounts that they turn on. You just have a very tiny screen that comes on to give you settings information. And what I'm disappointed about, though, is that there is no way to set up your shot. Uh, there is no app that allows you, for example, to view the video footage. Cena says they're working on it. They think they can do it with Bluetooth. But at this point, there is no way to set up your shot. I am curious if a micro SD uh, connection could be made. Um, or I'm sorry, a micro uh, HDMI connection could be made. But that would be extraordinarily complicated. We'll put the battery in real quick. We'll get this closed, and I'll show you that little screen which is pretty bright in theory. That's what all the reviews say. And uh, we turn it on by holding these two buttons. I did read the manual beforehand. The red light comes on. Seeing a prism, and there we have it. I used to have an MP3 player. I swear that that screen is identical to, like the bright blue and everything. I mean, way back, it was like a two gig MP3 player. Um, so there it is, it's got a little X telling me I don't have a card in there. That's coming soon. And the battery comes uh, appearing fully charged, which is cool. Holding the buttons again, turns it back off. Also in the box, a waterproof housing. Now this is weatherproof. Cena, uh, I'm upset that the 20S is, is only barely weatherproof, but I'm happy that the Cena Prism is weatherproof. So light rain, that kind of thing, shouldn't be a problem for the Prism. However, if you are in torrential downpour for hours and hours on end, or you want to go underwater, or you want to put this under a surfboard, or you want to put this on a boat where you don't have to be worried about dropping it, you have a 40 meter certified uh, waterproof, not weatherproof, not just weatherproof, but waterproof housing. And this housing works just like it looks, pretty easily. Well, probably better with the lens cap off. Slide right in there. There's really no reason why you couldn't use this on the bike, just for additional protection to protect the lens and to protect the camera. And, uh, and it mounts the exact same way using those quarter 20 threads. So it'll mount to anything uh, that the other will mount to. And you have these nice little buttons on top that function as the two buttons for the camera. And I mean, I can put that underwater. I can dunk that 40 meters underwater. When I had gone on my cruise this year, uh, if I had this camera, I totally would have brought it with this enclosure uh, to check out the ocean and that kind of stuff. Totally cool. Let's set this aside for a moment. Put the lens cap down. Next thing you get in another attractive box is helmet mounting parts. Let's rip that open and see what that's all about. 
Cena, people love their helmet mount. There's the little quarter 20 stud. Moving along, uh, we've got so, uh, an adhesive pad that allows you to adhesive to your helmet. Cena does this with their Bluetooth headsets too. It's a brilliant, brilliant feature because it means that folks who have helmets with thick neck rolls or other, uh, and I'm not talking about the rider, I'm talking about the helmet itself, um, and other situations where a clamp mount may not work, you can always use an adhesive mount. Here's a goggle mount, uh, which would slide into the strap of a pair of goggles. It'll also work with my drift shoulder mount that I use on my bicycle. I'm excited about that. Here is the creme de la creme. Here it is. Here is one of the things I love about the Cena Prism, one of the reasons I bought it. Bye-bye adhesive drift mount. Hello, clamp on uh, mount that is identical, nearly identical to the way that Cena's Bluetooth headsets clamp on. It also contains a small piece of adhesive. Uh, I'll need to read the manual further to know what that adhesive is for. Um, but this, this helmet clamp is what I'm going to be using to mount it, and it's a brilliant, non-intrusive, non-invasive way. So while I'm sitting there trying to figure out how to remove uh, this, the stuck-on mount off of the side of my helmet from my drift, I will be thanking Cena for including that mount. Then you have, this is the ball and socket system. This is how Cena's stuff mounts. A lot of people love it. Okay, this is a negative for me. Uh, the ball and socket is great because it's easy because you slide it on there, you pop it in there, and well, I got to loosen it first, but you pop it in there, and then you can easily move and mount and slide things around, and you're good to go, right? That sounds brilliant. It sounds beautiful. It sounds awesome. Uh, what could be easier? And you know, I don't have it tightened down, obviously, but you know, you can move it around. Oh, that's great. Except it's not, and the reason it's not is because then it can be bumped and it can be shoved, and once again. Uh, Cena does not give us any easy way to check our shot. So things can be bumped and jarred and moved. We can lose our shot. What a pain. Uh, I would much prefer a system more like what GoPro has, where it is a little more of a pain to get set up at first, but once it's set up, it's there and it's not going anywhere. I would prefer that. Obviously, it wasn't too much of a knock because I still bought it. Uh, then we have, you know, kind of your standard adhesive mount where it can slide right in, GoPro style. Uh, and that could be adhered to anything. And, uh, and then this is another uh, kind of clamp style. Um, but this one is probably what I'm going to be using on the bike. Uh, as I said, I don't like the idea of the ball and socket mount. I'm going to see if this is going to work. I'm not real clear, but I think it will. I'm almost positive it will. I think the way this works is that this will slide right into the, to the uh, clamp mount, and then the quarter 20 threads will go on here. Um, no, I think I'm wrong on that, to be honest with you. Either way, this is uh, just standard quarter 20 threads, and this would clamp into like that adhesive mount, I think is what's happening there. Yeah, that's what's going on, so ignore what I just said. So that's the helmet mounting kit, but as you can see, there's a lot of box left. This is another place where Cena really shines. Just like the 20S, we have the main event on top, and then we have a flap. Under the flap, look at that. We have a box of goodies. All kinds of stuff in here, and I'm not going to go through it all. I'm just going to kind of show it off all to you. Um, here's a suction cup mount. Um, here is a uh, handlebar mount. That's really cool. I'll probably get some use out of that for some alternative shots. USB cable includes, of course, USB cable for firmware updates, charging, uh, and that kind of thing. Much, much shorter cable than what comes with the 20S. Seems to me like it would make sense, since both use the same USB standard, to include the exact same cables as the 20S but whatever. And of course I can use my 20S, it's in here somewhere, uh, my 20S uh, cigarette lighter adapter, I can use that to charge the prism, which is cool, because I mentioned, as I mentioned, the on-bike charging. Um, another ball and socket mount, um, you know, just a tons of mounts. Another ball and socket mount. This funky thing that's uh, like, it connects to those uh, suction cups I showed you. And you can move and wobble and move things around, and you can get this thing mounted anywhere. If you want to mount this Cena Prism to blank, if you're going to comment on my video and say, can I mount this on my blank, the answer is going to be, yes, you can mount this on your blank. Because it comes with everything. Uh, here we go, another, another adhesive mount. Uh, my drift came with a couple adhesive mounts, and, and here you go. Another backing plate uh, with a pass-through for the waterproof housing. Um, of course, you know, you kind of question how waterproof it is at that point. But I, I, I believe, or I assume, that that means that it's no longer going to be waterproof with this backing on there, um, but it is going to be still weatherproof, and you'll have the ability to swap things around. Steel cable, don't know what that's for, um, but I'm sure I'll figure it out. Um, another uh, 
a thingy. This is a this is a regulation doohickey, uh, and it is for doing stuff with. Actually, it looks like it mates up right to the uh, suction cup somehow. Finally, the upgrade now, reminding you to check the firmware because they come out of the factory, new firmware comes out, and they don't always update the factory, and your manual. And oh, more mounts because we need more mounts. Uh, oh, these are these are uh, uh, so we saw the doohickey. These are thingamajigs, uh, and uh, these thingamajigs uh, work in conjunction with the doohickey uh, for the what you call it. And uh, and that's what you get: a huge pile of junk on my desk, uh, most of which is going to stay in those plastic bags for the rest of their lives. And we have a Cena Prism 20s that can be mounted any way you could possibly want. All right, guys, let's uh, let's talk about it some more. So here we have the Cena Prism. I'm really excited about it. I'm hoping that the video quality is great. Uh, video quality with the Cena Prism is not as good as a GoPro. GoPro wins, okay? That's just all there is to it. When it comes to video quality, nobody seems to be able to beat GoPro in the quality department. They know what they're doing. They've been doing it for a long time, and they do an excellent job at it. And what they're able to do with the GoPro and the Hero 4 and some of the other uh, cameras that are out now from GoPro is just astounding. They're really able to do some pretty incredible stuff with quality out of a small camera. These GoPro cameras are finding their way into Hollywood because they work so well. But the Cena Prism still gives us, and there's all kinds of videos online comparing the two, um, the Cena Prism does give us exceptional video quality for what it is and a lot more sharpness. For example, with the Drift, you can't really make out my gauges very well. I think you're going to be able to with this, although a lot of that is YouTube's processing. YouTube, if you didn't know, YouTube botches videos so bad. Uh, with the way that they compress videos, and there's just nothing that, that I uh, or any other creator can really do about it. It just is what it is. But this is going to be flying along the road on the side of my helmet, and I'm really excited about it. I'm hoping that this improves audio quality for vlogs so that they're uh, better for you. I'm hoping that this improves video quality so that uh, it's a little more exciting for you to watch. Uh, and I'm hoping this just kind of improves everything in general. I'm really excited about it, and I hope that you guys are excited about it too. A few things I don't like. I, I don't like that as I open the back up, I mentioned this already, I don't like that there's no microphone jack. I realize that this is designed to be used with a Bluetooth headset. However, it never hurts to have options. And being able to connect a microphone uh, opens up other doors for me, such as using this camera in other ways, other than just on my helmet. Right now I'm using the iPhone, and that's what I use. I, uh, I've talked about that before. You know, modern smartphones just have excellent video quality. Um, nothing compared to, you know, studio-grade camcorders, but pretty good for what I've got. But what if I wanted to use this? I've already got this camera. Um, what if I wanted to? Uh, well, I really can't because I can't plug a microphone into it unless I did what I'm doing here. It's kind of a bad example because I'm already going to be splicing the audio in from another source, but bear with me, right? Humor me. Another problem is uh, this does not have as wide of a, of a view as the Drift or the GoPro. Only 150 degrees field of view. Not a problem for me. Could be a problem for some of you. Uh, to me, the 150 degree field of view means less distortion. So less comments about me not riding in the right part of the lane because the distortion from the wide field of view and the relation being on the right hand side of my helmet makes it appear that I'm on a different part of the road than I'm actually on. Um, so, uh, so that's cool. Um, also, it will make things appear not as close or as far. A lot of distortion, for example, makes it look like I'm a lot closer or a lot farther from vehicles, um, things like that. It's difficult to tell. It's not like a funhouse mirror, but there is a lot of distortion with the wide-angle lens. Another feature of drift that I think is brilliant. Look at the size difference, right? These are enormously different cameras. This is brilliant. The ability to twist and move the lens. Not so with the camera. In this case, I have to move the camera around. That meant that with my drift, I can put it right up against the helmet and just twist the lens to make it straight. With this one, I have to use that silly ball and socket thing to straighten it out. Not a fan of the ball and socket. Cena, so, you know, I would love something that was a lot more fixed and permanent because I suspect that there are going to be some ruined vlogs that I go out and shoot and, uh, and I find out that the camera got bumped and it's pointing like that on the side of my helmet the whole time. I hope not but I suspect it might happen. Worth it for the quality that I'm getting? I hope so. I think so. Um, so other than that, though, I think it's pretty excellent. You know, again, I mentioned this earlier. A lack of 60 frames per second is disappointing, but it's not the end of the world. So it's raining right now, but uh, I think we're going to get out and test this thing out pretty soon. So look forward to a new video of testing out the Cena Prism and the Cena 20S together and motovlogging with a Cena fanboy setup, apparently. Uh, so, guys, I'll talk to you later. I'm, I'm really excited that you came just to, uh, to visit with me for a bit to check this video out in the comments below. 
Let me know uh, what you think of the Cena Prism. Let me know uh, what kind of things you look for in a motor vlog in terms of production quality. And, uh, and let me know what you thought of it. Is this something that, that you might consider yourself if, if you're a motor vlogger? Uh, or is this something that, uh, or do you think the GoPro just has it and, and I'm wasting my money here? So let me know, guys, in the comments below. As always, uh, I can't wait for you to subscribe to check out more videos from me. And God bless, guys. I'll talk to you later. All right.